Hot Sauna. This is a podcast where we talk about weird dreams, odd laws, and interesting thoughts. I am Brett, World Stroller Hanrahan. I tried to get on the on the Globe Trotters, but they they wouldn't have me. I thought you were gonna stick World Star, but like World Stroller. <laughs> oh like the, yeah, like the weird yeah. knockoff version of it of of World Star, where yeah. instead of is getting World in Star fights, still a thing or did that die out? I think it's still a thing, but I don't know who watches it. I think it's I don't like know who checks died. up on it. It's definitely still a thing for sure. Yeah, it's the last time I heard of someone like seriously like actually enjoying World Star was when I was in middle school. I think that's more of a reflective on you as a person and the people you choose to associate with. I think you've just gotten a more reflective. Well, no taste one said I associated with them. That's just the last time I heard someone like even like no i know you were best friends with the world star posse in middle school you can't lie to me yeah yep they they called you sam the world of stars risley yeah but what do they call you now though yeah what's your title now they call me sam poker chip from sonic risley poker chip from Sonic, like the rest. I'm trying to break that down. Yeah. Oh no no, um, Mel has one of these. Yeah. My my I friend went, Mel has a poker chip from Sonic. I went. It's like to a little Sonic. thing where if they fuck up your order, they're like, "Here, this is your free thing. Give it to us, and we'll give you free food." But then yeah. they're like, "No, I like the po- I like it. I like it." I'm gonna yeah. Keep it. Oh, okay. I don't think they ever. I don't. I, this was a poor marketing scheme because they probably spent a ton of money on expecting people to like give these back and be able to reuse them. No, I'm fucking keeping this. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, oh, this is cute. I want it. This Dealing is my like dealership now. I have a full-on poker set. So this is like what I'm going to use to mark the dealer. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I fe- it fell. I like this little this little intro we're doing now where we figure out the mysteries behind uh, each of our titles. I <laughs> kind of the, the poker chip. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. Well, that sucks because my introduction was going to be Cyan. God, I wish I were coming right now. Haskins. And if no, you well, really that's want a great one of... to delve into, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of on the nose there. <laughs> no, or... I think that one is pretty self-explanatory. I think it's just a uh, on on man. The nose, I wish I could or... have that type of uh, <laughs> wish I could feel that good right that now. That sensation on, yeah. on the nose or on the other part of the body. Because like I we'll tell leave you, it what, to the like, imagination. I have a little bit of food in me, but like I still feel kind of like eh, and then like my head kind of feels swimmy, and I'm like, man, I wish I could just be coming. Instead of feeling this way. <laughs> Instead of feeling sick yeah. all throughout my body, I wish I was literally just jizzing. Yeah, I think that would be a more pleasant experience. Yeah, sure. I think that would feel better to me than being sick. I no, mean, for sure. It would. It definitely... I feel like just about anything would, right? Feeling yeah. nothing might be better. Well, well. <laughs> just kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone numb. Oh, I've, you've become, I've become so, so, numb. so numb. But I can still feel you there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Brett leaned over and gently poked my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Ever so gently. I can just say, there. I can feel you there. Let's let's gently just stroll on over to our to our first segment. Yeah, let's gently world stroll in. Yeah, world stroll. So, God damn it, we didn't decide who's going first again. We gotta do this before we start recording. I nominate the... Let's do this Cards Against Humanity style. Whoever pooped last. That, that was probably me. Yeah, we're gonna give it that one to Sam, I think. Alright, Sam, you are the proud winner. You'll, your trophy's in the mail. Uh, go on to your, to your dream. Uh, Alright. So... <laughs> I would like to start this dream by stating Mm. I personally love bees, but this person doesn't. Okay. All Um, right. This one, uh, this person, it comes from Alpha or Orionis on Reddit. Uh, It says, "A few nights ago, I dreamed my boyfriend poured bees into my hair, cupfuls and cupfuls of bees." And he told me if I would just stay calm, they wouldn't sting me. So I had to <laughs> I sit lo- still as death while one of my biggest fears crawled all over me. <laughs> oh my god. I remember a dream like this. Oh? Like I that you had? This. I didn't have it, no. I, I read it online. It could be the same thing. But god, I remember reading that and just 
I couldn't stop thinking about cups of bees. Cups, Pouring just cups, cups of bees. like you just somehow got bees chill enough and to get cup. filled into a cup to the brim, and then just yeah. pour them into someone's hair. Well, yeah, like all I could focus on was the cup of bees. Well, I mean, it's just like that cup of ants that we had a few. Well, ants ago. can't really fly, you know. Also, it's harder to get bees in a cup. Also, we what? all know this. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. It was like ants don't. Fly unless it's one of those special ants. A queen ant. That's special cool Yeah, ants. one of those OC ants. Well, here's what happened to this chick. My ant has wings. This this chick was, or, or dude. I think I, my mic just picked up my stomach growling. <laughs> okay, welcome back to Vorsana. Please, or you stop our that. Podcast. You Please, stop enough. That. Stop right now. I think this person... Just binged Fear Factor and went to sleep straight after. Oh, yeah. you that's, know what? That's, that's literally what happened. My to them. thing is like, bees won't hurt you unless you just like, like if you just sit still, they'll like climb on you and then leave. Yeah, but I understand. Like, I I I, I know exactly what you're t- getting at, Sam. I'm the same person, bee rights activist. Um, but I don't know. I would be a little wary uh, of them being a little. Ang- aggravated if they were forced into a cup and then poured out onto my hair. Into your hair. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. that's fair. I respect bees. I don't like bees. I respect them. But if you put them in a situation where they're just tangled in someone's hair, they're gonna get pissed. You're revoked from that. Sign just showed me a picture of Suicide Squad Joker. Whatever. <laughs> this- it's it was a hair Snapchat full of, of a bees. toy I got. Oh. Yeah. He's just got the word bees written on his forehead. It's very edgy. <laughs> but I think this signifies, right, that maybe this chick needs to go out into nature, get some bees in her hair, get some get some. Maybe it'll squirrels. help her overcome her fears. Yeah, everyone overcome wants to be fears. a flower crown bitch until they find out that bees like flowers and will be all up in their hair. But here's the thing, if you befriend them and tame them, you can fly. Yep. Did you say you can fly? <laughs> yeah. They get tangled in their hair and they flap and you can just you just you, you fly. Just, you just start what if, going. What if when you befriend them you grow a stinger? Oh, what oh, like you become you slowly become a bee? Is that what you're saying, Sam? Yeah. You become a human bee hybrid. You become a little bee? Little bee? No, no, you become a human sized bee. Oh, big bee. A Ned big bee. <laughs> a human. Wait, are, a human sized bee or a bee human hybrid? A human sized bee. bee. I, I don't know. I kind of like the human bee hybrid. I like the human bee hybrid better only because there might be some sentience behind that, some sense that. I'm a huge bee. Y'all can just say you want bee furries. Y'all can just say you want bee furries. That's not... That's I'm sure that's well, a Who thing. would you rather run into? A bee that's the size of a human or a bee-human hybrid? I guess a bee-human Both hybrid. Like, yeah. I, you're, like, you're not wrong, but just admit it. I don't... You want a sexy bee girl. This is a this is a horny episode. I wish I were horny. coming. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess everything tracks. <laughs> no, I've just been drinking a little bit of the sangria, which is a uh, fake alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm fake drunk. This this H-E-B dream is then. saying that if you don't face your fears, someone else is going to make you force them and you're going to be unprepared. You know what? Yeah. Right? If someone said, Sam, your apartment application would be approved if you just let us scoop a cup full of bees into your hair, I'd be like, fucking do it. No. <laughs> No, those there's no way those bees are gonna be chill. Yeah, those bees are be angry. Those are some pissed bees. Here's those the are thing. some bees recognized by scent. They're rec- gonna recognize I'm not the one that put them in the cup. They're gonna recognize the scent of the hand that put them in the cup. I don't know about that. I don't think they got in a cup and they were like That's recognize this person's scent. We're going after them. I think they just got they just, their thoughts were uh. I'm in a cup with a bunch of bees. As soon as I get out, I'm going to sting something and then run away. I think that was the thought process behind the bees in a cup. But bees in a cup does seem like a pretty good kind of like skin lotion kind of treatment or yeah, something. Yeah, bitches ain't like shit and they ain't saying nothing. 
A hundred motherfuckers couldn't tell me nothing. I got bees in the cup. Bees in the cup, endorsed by Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> you just get a bunch of bees you in a cup. Bees in the cup. And they all have lotion just kind of on, on their bodies, and they just kind of run around you. Yeah, no, I remember there was like a bee brand of uh, skincare stuff when I worked at Ulta. I remember that. I don't remember exactly what it was called, but there was a... There Burt's? Was a, bees? It wasn't Burt's Bees. It was a different one. Because it was like more... Because Burt's Bees is just lips, if I'm remembering Man, correctly. Who thought... I know. Burt's Bees does a bunch of stuff, I'm pretty sure. Do they? I don't know. There, there is some other bee honeycomb-looking ass yeah. product there. I'm going to get some bees, and I'm just going to put them on my lips. Hmm. And that's in, how Burt's Bees was around, created. Around where I like to visit in Colorado, there's a bee fa- there's a bee farm where they have like a little shop set up, and it just sells a bunch of like bee products, and like they have like flavored honey, and it's awesome. Go well, you get it straight from the source. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's <laughs> fantastic. Because they just got like. It's like little pixie sticks to tubes, except like pla- hard plastic, because it, you know it's honey. You can't put honey in like the paper pixie sticks tubes, but um, and it's like hard plastic, and you just like drink the honey out of it, and it's great. Yeah, I've had those. Do you drink honey or eat honey? It's drink. Brett, I'm gonna go with drink as well, because I've never. I've never bitten down on honey. You it, you drink it unless you put it on food in the same way that you can drink hot sauce, but if you put hot sauce on, like, your burger, you're not drinking hot sauce mm-hmm. when you eat the burger. You're not eating the hot sauce. I think if you're drinking it, like, out of a container, you're drinking it. And if you're mm. eating it on a food, you're eating it. Yeah. Guys, this is a very pressing thought I just had. Yeah. Do you think the bees killed anybody in Bee Movie, like, during their uprising? I think there were many th- in, uh, in, beer, yeah. in B movie, in the yeah. B movie when they had their uprising to get all the honey back, like they felt real powerful, so they all just ganged up on some people and killed them. So the bees got a god complex. Yeah, basically is kind of what I was going for. Aren't they like you know the adrenaline of getting all their honey back and starting a revolution and winning that court case? Yeah, they got so excited that they were like, "We have so much power. We're gonna let's just fucking kill someone." Yeah, you know, Didn't, and they killed someone, and they're like, "God, it feels so good!" Like three more, all right, three more, and then we're done. Well, and then they killed what, like five about, more because they got excited. Wasn't there a part in the movie where like one of the bees stings a dude, and then yeah, like, dude, it's a big ho- deal. But then they win. Yeah, and stings then like right the, the bee is in the hospital, and he like describes it, and he basically describes an orgasm, like how it felt to yeah. sting someone. Is I t- uh, okay. So that guy is into some shit then, because when, is it, once a bee like stings someone, isn't like the stinger like ripping out all their organs or something? Isn't that why they die? Yeah. So I this guy's like, like, oh that. my god. Ooh. Uh, oh god, play. this is a horny episode. Let's get on to the next subject. Organ play. Ah. Bad. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> eh, 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 eh. All right, I'm gonna go next. Woo. Wait, really? I'm the finale. Yeah. Oh shit! All right. Well, you know, you you probably got a horny thing to end us off on. Yeah, you know, I, got... I want to keep it. You know, keep it steady throughout the end. Yeah, least... mine's real sexual. It's about being in bed at night. So get ready. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, it's about having some nice alone time. Okay. Well, let's get on to my law. This okay. is from narcity.com, and it's a law from Canada. Mm. So In- we're international law. International law. Hey, so. Brett, finally picking up the international train. That's right. Uh, Canada made some of our greatest music. Rush, Avril Lavigne, Nickelback. Can- Rush is from Canada. Yeah, dude. I didn't Straight know up. That. Nathan Fielder. Nathan Fielder, one of the greatest musicians of our time. Ed Sheeran. Valerie Jepsen's from Canada. Really? Yeah. Right. I always. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, those 21 pilots, they're really from the world, though. They really birthed from the world. Mm. And they took all the world's best attributes and kind of compiled them into one person or two people, depending on how you see the band. This, this law is from Canada. And Where Alpha Omega takes place. Exactly. 
There where, we go. Where I the greatest it. series of movies takes place. In Alberta, Canada, it's illegal to set fire to the leg of a wooden-legged man. <laughs> <laughs> only, only there, though. Yeah. Only Every in Alberta. Canada, if you fine. set an old man's leg on fire anywhere else, it's totally legal. Yeah, fair game, you know? I can just imagine this law just manifesting in a form of one really pissed off guy just looking to just destroy something. And all he had was some oil and a match and a dude with a peg leg right next to him. It's like, well, all the ingredients are here to do something bad. <laughs> I guess I gotta do something bad. Like, I feel, you can't, the you man can't saw plot. an opportunity and he took it. You cannot plot that kind of situation. That has to come up from some comedy movie levels of some situations. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have something. I have an idea. Oh. Idea of the hat. Pirates. Yeah. Like this this was this was created because like in land Canada. <laughs> yeah. Hey, those land pi- they were a thing in kid codename Kids Next Door. Canadian pirates, Sam? No, Canadian like, land Kids pirate. Next Door. <laughs> I'm I think there was an episode with that. I'm not sure. But yeah, dude, wasn't there like a group of pirates that could sail on land? Yeah, there was a candy beard, I believe his name was. And he just yeah. took all the kids' candy for himself. And he also had a peg leg. I, I mean, I guess they could just ride around on, you know, the dog sleighs. Dog sleds. The dog sleigh. The dog sleigh. Yeah, Tanti. And they just, they just go around and hope no one sets their legs on fire, I guess. Yeah, it's like, oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> sure is legal to do that here, huh? You would think that would go under either arson or assault. Yeah. Probably a, a mix of both. of both, honestly. I feel like it would be both. But you you have to imagine if the if this specific law had to be made, somebody won the conversation of this is not illegal yet. Yeah. Yeah. Someone won the loophole of actually no, no law is forbidding me from doing exactly what I just did. Okay. What if when they did this, what if it, when they legalized the, all this law, they what if they legalized this law, they did it to take pirates off the sea? Oh. Like, they made it so this town could become like a Tortuga-esque thing. You know, like in Pirates of the Caribbean where it was like a, Tortuga was like a safe haven for pirates? Yeah, I oh think the, the entire state of Canada was like, we need, you know what we need more of in these parts? <laughs> We yeah. need some pirates. We need we some need, they're like, we need to get pirates. The pi- Canada was going through a rough time in terms of their shipping industry because of pirates constantly robbing their ships. And mm-hmm. so then one day they were like, all right, let's make it illegal to l- set peg legs on fire here. And then pirates will want to come here and get off the seas. And so that's, they- a, that's a pirate's only weakness. That's the only thing that's, stopping them from getting That's their Achilles heel. Yeah. It's the Achilles wooden leg. Also, for the record... Uh, I only know about the island Sam's talking about from the Michael Bolton SNL <laughs> skit. I've never actually seen. This yeah, is I've never tale actually seen a Pirates of the Caribbean of Captain movie. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I only know about the island of Tortuga because okay. of that song. But let's be honest, that fucking like Captain Jack Sparrow music video, like just the song in general by Lonely Island, is a a bit of a bop. All their song r- songs songers are bangers, and that's just their it. Their songers are bangers. Their songers are bangers. They were probably advocating for this law. Yeah, that law probably oh, happened shit, back in right. what 2010, 2011, and they were like, uh, "Hey, everybody, come on over to what is it, Alberta? Yeah, Alberta, yeah. Canada. Come on over to Alberta, Canada, and we'll um, we need to make a safe haven for pirates. Yeah, yeah. we have exactly what you need with the help of Michael Bolton." <laughs> who was once a pirate Michael himself. Bo- Michael Bolton, the president of piracy. Oh, oh, and Michael Bolton, he's like on stage at the at the rally for this law. And he he goes to everyone and he says, I have a secret. And then he sticks his leg out and he pulls up his pant leg. No. And it's well, a okay. wooden leg. An- no. another, this whole time. Another, another counterpoint where it's like, a shitty infomercial advertising this town 
and Michael Bolton's walking around, and he's like, has this ever happened to you? And he, like, steps out with his wooden leg, and some hooligan runs up and, like, lights it on fire. And he's like, (laughs) oh, no. A drive-by lighting. Yeah, a (laughs) drive-by lighting. And he's like, if this has happened to you or a loved one, it's illegal in Alberta. Move here. This is a safe haven. Yeah, call 1-800-ALBERTA. Pirate. That shit won't be happening here. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, it's like a commercial for like a retirement home. It's like, are yeah. you done being a pirate? Are you retiring? <laughs> and you want a safe place to keep Has your, your peg, peg leg, leg been up on set the on table? fire one too many times? Alberta luxuries. Pirate retirement isn't the end of your life. It's the beginning. <laughs> it's the beginning of a new chapter. We have we have booty robbing rooms where you can act like you like you stole somebody's loot. You can bury around for dirt, buried treasure in our sandbox. Yeah, I was about to say, we have plenty of sandboxes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what a retirement I haven't been to a retirement home, though. I don't know what they got there. And every every residence gets a free life sandbox. alert for if, should, should a hooligan light your leg on fire. Yeah. A 20 by 20 foot playscape. It looks like a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> Climb the netting. <laughs> it's just like a Chuck E. Cheese for instead old Instead of a daily newspaper being delivered to these people, it's like a daily treasure map. They're bumper cars. <laughs> they have little. They have little treasure hunts every morning. Oh my! At six a.m. You know the time old people are awake. Grog, grog is served in the mess hall every morning. That's right. Um, maybe this is the haven. Maybe Alberta's just a big old retirement home. <laughs> For pirates. Yeah. <laughs> it's just full of aging pirates who have peg legs and walkers. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. And here's the thing. Like, the walkers is- are also made of wood, and there has been no law made for that yet. This is, the fear ki- this is the feared pirate Captain Blackbeard. This is Brownbeard. This is Blondebeard. This is No Beard. <laughs> this is Goatbeard. This is Ravensbeard. This is a guy named Todd. <laughs> We're all allies in this. Yeah. In this beautiful retirement home that we call Alberta. Uh, Alberta. 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 And then this Pirate is our Palooza. spokesperson, Michael Bolton. <laughs> Michael Bolton runs this retirement home. Yeah. He's just chilling, y'all. He's, he's the one who started the petition, that. man. Yeah, he's the one that got the whole thing off the ground. Let's see. Where, yeah. I'm going to Google where Michael Bolton is from real quick. Alberta, Canada. Yeah, obviously. Why do you think he'd be advocating for this in this spot in particular? Yeah, we already know it. Even when he was a kid, he was like, man, there are too many people burning pirates' legs off. Yeah, like, I got to change this when I get older. I really wish that people wouldn't burn pirate legs. Yeah. You know, like, I'm not a pirate myself, but I'm like a pirate ally, you know? And like, <laughs> it, just, it really hurts me. My parents are pirates. Listen, pirates have done bad things in the past, but they've changed. We have new pirate views and modern pirate ideals. Arg. <laughs> yeah, like saying arg. <laughs> uh, like I'm, I'm looking up. I'm looking up famous people from Alberta. We don't say Canada, arg. We say arg. arg. <laughs> arg. Sorry, what was that, Sam? I'm looking for. I'm looking up a list of famous people from Alberta, Canada. You're gonna find no one. You're gonna find not a single person. That's my guess. While we're, man, while he's doing that, why don't we go on to our next subject? Kind of transition. Yeah. And he'll interrupt us whenever he feels fit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox is from Alberta, Canada. Michael J. Fox is Canadian. Michael J. Fox is a pirate. He's a pirate. Oh. For sure. It all makes sense. Michael Bolton won't be on there because he had to act like he was from Marty McFly some other place. Is is a pirate advocate. I mean, you had to you if you read the subtle details in the Back to the Future movies, then you would you would have already known this, Sam. This is no news to anyone else. Yeah, if you've analyzed Back to the Future as much as we have. You can notice in a very in like two frames of the video, 
of the movie and when he gets on the hoverboard he says yeah mateys on to the next door <laughs> money 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 money, money. <laughs> but it's real quick and most people don't even notice it yeah michael j fox plays mr krabs Pinch me house <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get on to our last segment, The Thought. Um, so pre-bedtime thoughts are just try not to cringe challenges of your past. Every time you go to bed, you really just turn on your try not to cringe myself edition. Oh, Oh, God, I hate that because I've been going through that so much lately. (laughs) Try not to cringe me edition. It's literally just like... I'm like, ah, oh, it's time for bed. I'm tired. And I lie down. It's like, hey, you've amounted to nothing and you never will. And I'm like, oh, now I can't That's sleep for the next two process. hours. <laughs> yeah, my, my cringe comp is more of like flashback to me, like being 11, being like, yeah, God, I want to fucking do something. I don't know. What do 11 year olds talk about? I don't know. <laughs> Pokemon? No, no, no. Mine does that too, but I'm it's like, I want to be that's why Mario. I- Oh, God. oh yeah, you, we did have a... You had a Lucario thing. Do you think that's when you discovered, like, you might be a furry? Um, no. I discovered I was a furry when I was, like, in fifth grade. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wasn't that from Lucario? No. Oh. Yeah. But, no, uh, I just kind of been no. Sam, I grew up watching like furry movies and furry cartoons. Pokemon definitely did have like a hand in it, but like Pokemon's there, there for there. sure. But like I, I watched a lot of movies and a lot of cartoons that would uh, have shaped me to be a very young furry at the age of nine. But no, Sam, when fair I enough, when enough. I think of cringe moments, I think of when I was in Disney World at the ripe old age of like six, and I told a bunch of Indian people I knew Spanish just like them. And then it said, buenos dias, muchas gracias. Oh, no. <laughs> Brent. Oh, no. And they oh, looked at me, and my mom ushered me the other direction. <laughs> Brent, that's so bad. I mean, I get you were six. But like, I was oh, six years God. old. And I saw oh, some people that weren't white, I guess. And I was like, they must be Mexican. Oh my God. And so that was that, and that is that, and that's what I think about that sometimes, was, Sam. Awful. And that is, yeah, it's in my cringe cop, Sam. <laughs> what do you think we're talking about right now? Let's see. Um, when I, I any specific a, cringe cop moments for me. Oh man, let me. When I was in, uh, for me or for Brett? For me. Oh, when for I was in, When I was in kindergarten. You, Brett, you remember how like they'd have all of us gather outside and we'd have to high five our teacher when we found our parents and then leave. Oh yeah. Um, I remember I thought I saw my mom, so I high fived my teacher and ran up and I hugged the person and I was like, "Mom!" Ah. And it was not my mom. <laughs> I have a fun one. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> This one I've told to Brett before. I might have told it to you too, Sam. Um, when I was in fifth grade, Avatar The Last Airbender was kind of big. Um, and we had just gotten to the part in the series where um, Zuko and Iroh become fugitives to the Fire Nation. Um, uh-huh. And the symbolism in this is that everyone in the Fire Nation, like, it's like a symbolic cultural thing to have like your bun or ponytail or whatever. And they cut it off kind of as like, a, yeah, fuck the Fire Nation. Yeah, um, fuck the police. I put it together like, oh, if you cut your own hair, you become a criminal of the union, of the state. You become a fugitive. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you telling me this. Okay. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> the next day at school, me and my friend are talking and we're like, she's like, have you seen the, uh, the, 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 new, the new Avatar Last Airbender video? And I'll, or video. <laughs> as if it's a YouTube uh, yeah. episode. And episode. I'm like, yeah, dude. Um... So we, like, ran off into, like, part of, like, the park where, like, no one was. And we, like, brought our little safety scissors and cut off a little piece of each other's hair. And we were like, we're fugitives now. (laughs) Um, And it was cool and fun. uh, And it was cute. Uh, And then, like, the next day, she was like, so my mom asked me about the chunk of hair. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, I'm a fugitive. I cut my hair off. Now I'm a fugitive. And my mom was like, oh, that's not what being Uh, a fugitive uh, means. And I was like... 
I just couldn't handle that information. I didn't know what to do. And I just got really like sad and started crying. And then she was just like, you don't know what it means, do you? You don't know what it means. And I didn't know what to do with that information. I was just like, fuck you. So I punched her. <laughs> like square Jesus in the face. I, I, I was just like, fuck you. I know what a fugitive is. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And that's like the one time I've ever been violent in my entire life. <laughs> just out of sheer, like, overwhelming. Just because I didn't know what to do. I was just too overwhelmed <laughs> oh, with, like, so God. many different emotions. And I was like, stop making fun of me. How do I get you to shut up? <laughs> just, I don't, uh, uh, oh, I don't, uh, ah! Yeah, I was like, uh, uh, ah! <laughs> and I felt immediately bad about it. <gasps> punched like, started, the problem away. <laughs> yeah, I immediately started crying. And I like, got up and, like, went to the teacher. And I was like, I punched my friend. And she was like, what? What happened? Why are you crying? What happened? <laughs> and it was like, it was fine. You know, we got over it. Um, but that does pop up every now and again in my cringe comp as one of my uh, one of my lower moments. <laughs> not, uh, not, not one I of your most. I think one thing that pops up moments. in my cringe, cringe moments is that, like, for a solid amount of my life, I thought I was just completely straight. Well, that's that's well, not cringe. That's just discovering yourself, man. There's nothing shameful about thinking no, no. you're something and then realizing you're something else later. Nah, I was bad. No. I mean, it, my, my cringe was, comp is me being the way I looked at 17, being like, I'm a boy. Believe me. And everyone was like, we don't believe you. <laughs> Look at how you are presenting yourself. <laughs> like, no. Nah, well, I mean, not. I told you. Well, it's more of just like... I, 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 it was more of like in my head it was cringeworthy of me thinking I was straight because like I'd have these thoughts and I'd be like, no, bad, and I'd like, like mentally just tell myself I can't have these thoughts. I'm straight and. Okay, yeah, I know. I get good. you. It's not so much. Sam, have you ever seen a cringe comp before? Yeah, that. It's, <laughs> <laughs> no, usually I things that are actually. embarrassing and yeah, embarrassing and like funny like to other people. Yeah, or, like something you can laugh at. <laughs> not like I beat myself up and uh, was a victim of compulsory heterosexuality, um, and it not, made me feel empty and like I was wrong for a long time in my life. And uh, <laughs> I had an existential crisis. Welcome uh, to Sam's depressions. That's goofy. <laughs> uh, what well, I think anything from like when I was 15 and 16 and like dove way headfirst into being a furry, I think anything that I said in those like two oh. years were oh, uh, God. probably gonna pop up my cringe comp. Oh, uh, I guess uh, I guess something that's kind of cringeworthy is I unironically just absolutely love the Scooby Doo Two movie. There's nothing no, wrong dude, with that. I, yeah, that's fine. That is uh, that is absolutely fine. You haven't seen a cringe comp, have should, you? Should I just straight just up like come one. out with the by far the worst thing that like any of us can admit? Look, man, the worst thing. Any if you of us want can that admit, to be out in the public I, in the world, I mean, it's already out there. For about a year and a half, I was brony. That's probably the worst thing. So was everyone. If that's the worst thing that you have ever like been a part of, then I'm so happy that you don't have to <laughs> bear the battle scars. I tried to wear a fedora for a good year of my life. <laughs> I, uh, I was that. a I, I was a professional furry porn artist on furaffinity.com.net. <laughs> I drew furry porn for for money, a lot of it was specifically fetish related. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I guess you guys do have me beat. <laughs> Which it seems weird because you can't Sam, you can't handle secondhand embarrassment from oh, anyone. Man, I'm awful. So it, I, I feel like you would have some kind of tr cringe traumatic experience to lead to that. I don't I don't know, man, like as or maybe Sam just cringes at everything, so like a cringe comp <laughs> is just kind of like any any fact about that's someone. A, I think that's his secret. To, He's always cringing. No, <laughs> I think if I were to watch an actual cringe comp, I would probably like shrivel up into a ball and die because like, I mean, I do that. No, yeah, like, that's I don't the even point. have secondhand embarrassment. I just no. <laughs> if I was like, it's so strong that like. If there's an awkward part in a movie where a character is just like blatantly accidentally sabotaging themselves and just like it's super awkward and the I just like I have I shrink down I'm like no 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 
basically I can't, just the office. I can't handle it, man. You can make a cringe comp of like me at work. <laughs> Talking to customers <laughs> at Hot Topic. I mean, like an old, to, but like at Hot Topic, sometimes, sometimes I trip over my oh, work. Man. Sometimes when there I was, was like a customer in Hot Topic who like. When I was in customer service, just doesn't. Oh happen. man, mm-hmm. like someone would come up to me and ask me something, or like, and I I'd talk to them, and then they and then like I'd accidentally, uh, I'd like stutter because I sometimes do that, mm-hmm. and it would. I would feel awful because I have just placed myself at like looking weak in front of this person. Yeah, that's what that's how I that's how I felt like when I was what I, that's what I was explaining. I was like, yeah, a cringe comp of me just being like, "Are you on our membership program?" The program? Yeah. And then just like a smile and I'm like and then they just stare at me, and I'm like, "Please say a word. Yeah, Even if you say, say no, please just say uh, a word. Just, just Have laugh I at told me. You just about do the it. Worst Get it over shirt with." Shirt ever that came into Cinemark that like automatically triggered my fight or flight reflexes. <laughs> I'm not even joking, man. Like, I, I straight the, this guy. He came up. He was this tall, chunky white dude who had like a buzz cut. And he walked in, he was wearing this, like, dark brown shirt, and on the front of it, it said, Rifle Lives Matter. And it had, like, the silhouette of an AK-47 on it or something. Mm. I don't know my gun, so I don't know if it was the, pri- pro- like, what kind of model or whatnot. But I saw that, and I instantly left my register and went into the back room. And when one of my coworkers came in and went, Sam, what are you doing? I went, I'm not serving him. And, uh... <sighs> Blue Lives Matter. <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, okay, cringe. Uh, that was yeah. like all and like all of the all of the like uh, like EJ and uh, Trevor, who I worked with at the time. They're both uh, African American, and they both came in there and they went, "What the." fuck is with this dude's shirt y'all nobody needs an assault rifle nobody Nobody. needs an assault rifle unless you're like in the military in the army in the forces like no person just needs to have that kind of weapon on them i'm gonna hunt 300 deer tomorrow like okay here's my thing if you hunt you i like i'm not gonna take all the guns, because n- there's no way I'm going to be able to get rid of all the guns. Like, if I was in the government. I personally, Samuel Risley. The gun yeah, I taker. Pers- <laughs> but, like... <laughs> the gun snatcher. No the one gun needs, burglar. No one needs a fully automatic weapon. No one needs to fire off 25 shots in 10 yeah. seconds. Literally, a pump, a pump action shotgun that can fire one shot is enough to take down a buck. That's all you need. And, like, I get it. Some people actually do hunt for their food. I know a lot of... I, I'm sure that I've... M is, like, a cultural studies person. And I think she said, like, a lot of people in, like, Alaska, specifically, like, the uh, indigenous people still hunt for their food. And so they use rifles. But, again, they use bolt action and, like, single shot rifles, not a fully automatic AK-47 that was literally designed to kill people. That is what it was designed for. <laughs> It's just a ridiculous argument, y'all. You know? Check me out. I'll be on the other kin and furry cringe comps on YouTube. <laughs> um, Sam is going to have a breakdown about gun control. <laughs> well, we'll have another episode about talking about the NRA and general gun control. But for now, <laughs> let's but end this now, comedy we podcast. We have a 40-minute uh, episode that we have talked about guns on for a little bit you can find us it hasn't been established we are not exactly republicans on this podcast you can find us on gmail twitter discord facebook itunes spotify bernie 2020 we got our own website but we're really not going to promote that much because it doesn't look great um wait we got a website when did we get that well it's, it's like provided by libsyn Oh, okay. The person who... Oh, Weebly? <laughs> I thought you guys paid one. I'm Weebly breeder, Thought- Brett Hanrahan. Uh, yeah, thoughtsauna.weebly.com. Go check it out. Oh, you can find I got our a podcast. Real quick. 
Find our podcast where all our podcasts are made and find Burn Ban. Ooh. Baptismal Regurgitation. Stop Shooting People is one of the tracks. It so is. So it's, go, real, it's my, it's my personal favorite out. on that album. Self Thank you. promo. Yeah, that's right. But I got a real quick cringe comp addition for you. Yeah. Go for it. Remember in animation when Mr. Nurse required us to make our own websites for our animation pro- portfolios? Yeah. Yep. Yep, mine's still up, and it's bad. Yep, I go to it every now and again. I, I like how you think I haven't seen it within the past couple of months, because I sure have. Ugh. Yeah, it's like I just, it's not bookmarked on my Google Chrome. Yeah, is it all, it my, all my friends, day. Mr. Nurse's websites, like literally all of them, like you and Ruby <laughs> and Quinn, like I have them all bookmarked. Like, I have them. I'm not losing them. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week. Bring a towel next week. Do you think Botsana will end up in a cringe comp? Probably. For sure. No, definitely. If if no one puts us in it, I'm gonna make it. And that's the <laughs> end. Thoughts on a cringe comp is just all the episodes <laughs> in their entirety. <laughs> Sam stopped recording several minutes ago.